Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. So a little while back, I did a tutorial on initial build orders, and that was pretty much just an introduction to the game. You can start with a certain set of builds, and up till about three minutes, the process is kind of automated. There's some variables that can be thrown in, like first bomber or very, very early aggression. But for the most part, all initial games the initial part of the game usually falls out about the same way. But once you get past that, you run into when do I start teching up? When do I get T2 land? When do I get a T2 mechs? How much attention do I pay to my eco? And I get this question all the time. And really, there is no answer. Um, it depends on the map. It depends on what faction you are. It depends on who you're against, what faction you're against, and there's no single answer. So what I'm going to do today is I have a map, which I have blacked out right here. You can't see it, you won't know what it is till we're actually on it, and I'm taking random factions. And I'm going to be versus a random faction, Saurian AI, which is going to be a pushover opponent. But for the sake of discussion, we're going to go ahead and jump in and do this. And I'm probably going to slow the game down after we launch, just so we can talk about the decision-making process and where we're going with this. All right, and one other thing I do need to say, I got, I talked a fair bit to both V, who is an outstanding one versus one player, and Speed2, who is a great ladder player and also has his own YouTube channel. You should check him out, Speed2 the word speed, the number two, um, he does situational tutorials on specific slots, on specific maps. So that might be something good for you to check out as well. But I talked to them and got their ideas. It was a good think tank. I was able to glean some things from them, and hopefully I can share those with you. Just bear in mind that a lot of the information I'm going to be sharing with you comes with discussions from better ladder players than I am. So hopefully this will do you guys some good. We're going to go ahead and launch... And we'll see what faction we come up with and what map we're on. Now, a common thread with both of the guys that I talked to was when the game starts, when you spawn in, look at the factions, look at the map you're on, and then decide on a strategy which you will pursue for the rest of the game. Now, we've got UEF versus UEF on the map Loki, which is going to be a pretty generic um situation and this map has no markers hopefully the ai will work if not we'll just go ahead and play and talk through it and see what happens all right so loki is a fairly large map with a lot of areas of access since i'm uef i don't have t1 hover my faction strengths always play to your faction strengths my strength is going to be t3 land but at the same time my opponent has the same thing percivals so a good thing to do would be to secure an air advantage. And if you can do that, then I can use gunships to harass and also control some of the land movements. And then in the later game, I can use T3 drops, some broadswords, possibly strap bombers to snipe off the ACU. Way out there, it gets kind of generic, but at least for the first part of the game, my focus is going to be expanding to my mexes and securing air control only building enough land units to defend what is coming my way. So that was my decision. It took way longer than 30 seconds, but we were able to slow down the game to explain it. And now I need to start building things. So I got my land factory here. I'm going to queue over there, build an engineer, take ACU. We're going early air, which means that I'm going to build a mass extractor. And then we're going to do seven power generators and an air factory, which is typically what is required. I'm going to take a step back, build the air factory, and then continue building a bit more power. I'm going to go ahead and do that right there. Now, I'm doing this a little clumsily. Honestly, you should probably do three to a side and leave a space so that if a bomber comes over early, it doesn't wipe out your entire power grid with a few bombs. But I'm versus a Saurian opponent, so I'm going to play a little lazy. Now, since we're going strong early air, that means that we can feasibly pull off drops. We can use transports to speed up our expansion on this map. And like I said, it's a fairly big map. So this is going to help us out a lot. 
Um, that should be something good to shoot for early. Oh, one thing I did not look at. We will need some reclaim. And there's some over there, but it is a long ways off. So I'm going to need to get some serious mass online here and possibly downscale my power grid here. Let's only do three after the build. Let's move here. And second engineer, we need to, there are no accessible rocks. Well, I have already messed up people, but it is okay. We will survive. There's no, ah, uh, there's some rocks down there, I think. It's hard to see. Yes, those are rocks. We may not be dead yet. All right, second engineer, we're going to go back here. And situationally, this map um, has tree clumps back here, which I've seen a lot of people do, like five or six power generator air factories. And they send engineers out to reclaim the clumps of trees to make up the power difference so that they are able to get air off the ground a whole lot earlier. We're going to place a move order there, and we're going to reclaim that strip of rocks. And that's going to help us make up our mass deficit as this game continues. Let's do... Um, I'm going to adjust this. Oopsie. Build that. I need you to build that. Build that P-Gen. Build those. And then let's finish off our power grid that we were doing. Because we need the mass. Alright, there we go. So, we have our faction strength manipulation decided upon, which is kind of a moot point, because it's UEF versus UEF. And we have our overall game strategy hammered out. Now, we need to stick with that. We don't want to be wishy-washy. We want to adjust it to respond to what our opponent is doing, but we do not want to change it. Um... That is, again, a common thread that I got talking to Speed and to V, was that the failure of a lot of players comes about from having too many things to focus on with not enough resources to do it all. Uh, you have to pick something and run with it. Also, the generic way to play the game is a little bit of T1, a little bit of T2, a lot of T3, and throw in a T4 somewhere. And if both players are doing the same kind of generic build order, then it's going to come down to who is better at micro manipulation and who gets out to their mexes earlier. Because when you're doing the same thing, um, ah, that is beautiful eco balance right there. If I do say so myself, if, if you're both doing the same things, it's, it's not going to be a very interesting game and it's not going to be very easy to get an upper hand. So being the single-minded, innovative player is going to be greatly to your benefit. Now, I'm actually going to bump the speed up on this just a little bit so we can expand a little quicker. And then we'll talk about a couple of things. And when I say play to your faction strengths and be single-minded, that means that when your faction pops up, whether you're picking the faction beforehand specifically so that you can have a certain strategy or... If you are choosing after the fact, if you want random factions like I'm doing, you need to know what tier your you, your faction is strongest at, and you need to stay there for as long as you possibly can. So we're on a land-based map here, and you, we're obviously going to be using mostly land, possibly some air units. And so UEF's strength is going to be at the T3 stage with the Percival. And if we're cybering, we're going to want to push some T1. Mantis are fast and strong, good rating units. We're going to want to secure map control with those. And you are going to want to get to T3 relatively quickly with maybe a pit stop at T2 for the Cybern Stealth, which is a faction strength. You're going to want to abuse that. And the Vipers, which are also a faction strength. Basically, you need to pick and choose what you use and when to use the best tools at your disposal. If you're Seraphim, you want the earliest possible T2 jump that you can manage because you want to use and abuse the Ilshavas. Those are going to be your strongest unit by far at any point in your land game. 
and then when you when your opponent moves to t3 you can complement that with a t2 gun com which will be able to counter any early t3 from your enemy so like if you're seraphim versus uef you can assume that they're going to shoot for early t3 and you basically play your entire game around denying them t3 for as long as you possibly can and in addition to that um maximizing your t2 usage and right here i just realized that i forgot to build any combat units at all even though i am a i'm against an ai that is a bad thing to do horrible practice don't want to do that i'm gonna build a tank here get this out scouts killed off by a bomber let's go ahead and run the scout across the base to see if we can kill off an expansion here and go for it ah i killed my own scout well that was an interesting development. Alrighty then. Moving on with this. Got two engineers here I'm not using. Let's go ahead and throw down a land factory there. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is when do you go for T2 in general and when do you go for a T2 max? Well, let's try to solve this conundrum here I'm gonna build some more power because I'm building air units that is power intensive I've got some tanks out which I'm gonna send across we're gonna send a bomber there I did not take advantage of early transports because I was too busy talking but we could have sent a transport for the southern corner which would have been a good thing oh please kill the engineer not quite I didn't see the engineer in the radar fast enough so we could drop the outside corners which would be a huge bonus there is a raiding party. Should be able to take care of this pretty easily with those, though. And we're going to want to get that extra power in the bank. I realize I'm floating a lot of mass right now. So we're going to start a T2 mass extractor. And when that first T2 mass extractor is done, we will go T2 air, which will allow us to gain access to a T2 engineer for T2 power. Because power is vital for air and then we can really get into the exciting part of the air game now you can actually build air well off of t1 power generators if you lose a, a lot of adjacency on a lot of factories instead of concentrated build power on one factory and let's go ahead and get some tanks rolling off of this because we're going to want to secure that that looks okay a lot of units streaming in through the middle, which is fine. Let's build a wave. We're going to cross here. Assist that. Let's kill off this engineer to stop it from expanding. Alright, so we're looking good. We get that done. Now we're going to stop this and build T2 air. And throw down a T1 engineer. And then some T1s so we can assist that for power. We're hemorrhaging mass again so let's uh, upgrade that tank production here you can see I'm in control of the air easily we got four interceptors and he has none so I can safely not build anti-air units we're going to go 100% tanks in order to hold and let's do tanks on repeat in the north as well was that a dead tank or was that scout produced first? That was scout produced first. Okay, so we're good. All right, and granted, an AI opponent is not a difficult opponent, but it serves well enough as an example. I can actually capture that truck and use it. That's interesting. Okay, so another T2 mass extractor and we're good. So I'm actually not executing my initial strategy extremely well because things happen, but this is good enough. So back to faction versus faction discussions. If you're Aeon, a faction strength is T1 because you have the Auroras, which are brilliant at overpowering other T1 through kiting with their enormously, massively awesome range. Um, if you bomb units underneath the transport, ah, my bomber died. You can actually kill the transport and all the units on it, which is incredibly cool. I'm going to push up here. I don't know where his ACU is. 
that was probably scouted and I just didn't see it. ACU may be over here. Let's take a look, see. A lot of times the Saurian AI will push the ACU out to an expansion. I just don't know which expansion it may be. Let's push these up here. Let's go for T2 power. And let's do a ghetto gunship. We've got air control. Let's stop this. Let's build an air transport and then a whole bunch of interceptors. And let's build tech marines and dump them out right here. Let's do another land factory and then assist the T2 engineer. And try to balance our power at least somewhat. And it's not going to work. Pause. Not enough power. And mech marines there. Alright, this ought to be fun. Just troll some AI opponents. Okay. Come on, T2 power, get up there. Anyway, the Auroras are definitely a faction advantage at T1. And the Aeon has an extremely good T3 to rush because Harbingers are fast, they are agile, and they have a decent amount of health and a huge amount of damage for an early game unit. So you're going to want to hold with T1 as much as you can as you move to T3 or stay at maximum production for as long as you can at the T1 stage without upgrading and just abuse the ever-living daylights out of those incredibly good T1 units. It's a faction strength. You want to abuse it versus any other faction so that you can get the best upper hand that you possibly can. And we're about to have our T2 transport out here, and that should be an easy KO on the enemy ACU. We're going to push interceptors over here, because if it was a human opponent, they would have air cover. We're going to dump all of these mech marines into the transport. Transport full, that's what you like to hear. And we should be good. Let's go ahead and swarm the base. And then cross over. And you can see, actually, there's a couple interceptors right here. We're going to use our superior air power, such as it is, because we're playing an air game. Hardy, har, har, har. Um, and kill off these interceptors right here in the middle. That one right there to protect our transport. That transport is going to head directly in for the ACU and should, should get a perfectly easy KO. And that is going to be game right there. Bye bye hell. Alright, so hopefully this was instructional to you guys. And again, it's not so much about knowing, oh, this is the time I should be pushing T2. Because if you want a general answer to that question, it's 10 minutes. But if you want a specific answer to that question, it depends on what faction you're against, what map you're on, your situation, and playing to your strengths. So. Uh, it is entirely situational. Just use your gut. Play a bunch of games, watch a bunch of your own replays, hopefully, and figure out what works best for you. There's even faction advantages as far as Navy is concerned. There's not a interrupting body of water on this map other than these in the back. So, I mean, hover units can be useful, but not super early. It's not an overpowered option versus a faction that doesn't have hover, but say you're on a map like Paradise where you have, um, it's mostly water, it's a 10k map, so it's kind of close quarters. You're going to want to abuse any advantage that your faction has to do with water. If you're Cybern, Cybern frigates, get navy in the water early and forget about land. Rush T2 land and get Wagners so you can hop from island to island with the stealth well, it's not directly stealth, but it's underwater, so they can't see it. With the stealthy units, which are a faction strength, or do cloaked drops, which is a faction strength, and use your units to manipulate the map to your advantage. If you're Seraphim or Aeon, you have T1 hover units, which are fantastic. If you have UEF, frigates are a good option. You have the strong cruiser and awesome 
destroyer. I say that because UEF destroyer is good in close quarters, and in Paradise you're going to have entirely close quarters naval encounters. Um, use what you have. Use your tools as best you can to gain an upper hand in the situation that you're in. So, uh, again, this is kind of a generic video. I hate to even call it a tutorial because it was a lot of ramblings about what you should maybe kind of sort of do in certain situations, but I do think that it is something that a lot of people will gain some good information from. So just to recap, if there's one thing that you take from this video, it is that in the first 30 seconds when your first factory is building, or even during the loading screen, if you know what map you're on and know what faction you are, you need to come up with a strategy. And then you need to implement that strategy with 100% of your effort behind it and scout so that you can anticipate and counter what the other people are doing with your build order. Blend it a little, throw in a few extra T1 bombers if you're air in order to help secure land control. Throw in a few extra combat units at the T1 stage if you're pushing for T3. Just kind of blend it out a little bit, make it work for your situation, but overall stick with the same plan and you will crush into a paste anyone who is playing a generic game trying to cover all of their bases without knowing what's coming. So hopefully that will help some people out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thanks to V and Speed for talking with me a bit before this video. I kind of hope to do a dual cast for this one, but honestly it just doesn't work with the format. So... Hopefully my explanation was sufficient, and I'm sure both of them will watch this and hopefully add their own comments to it. And I will see you guys in the next video. That is going to be on Tuesday, on Thursday. <laughs> Today is Tuesday. All right, see you guys then.